How you doing, YouTube? Welcome back to another episode of Digs of the Day, episode 12. I'm your host, DJ Tricks, and today we're going to be looking at children's albums. I've been uh, buying a lot of children's albums lately, and uh, it's one of the things that I've started collecting, and I just wanted to encourage you guys out there. I know a lot of you guys like uh, a lot of that Sesame Street stuff and Disney albums to uh, continue to search for them. If you find them, go ahead and buy them and put them where they belong, you know, share them with your kids. and. You know, today it's harder and harder to find uh, children's albums that are in good condition because, you know, back in the 70s and the 80s when kids got albums, they were probably like me and they scribbled all over them and, and most of them got damaged. So if you find them in their good, you know, good condition, go ahead and, and take them, pick them up and save them. And a lot of them could be uh, high priced. You know, you're looking on eBay. Like, for instance, this first album I'm going to share with you is uh, Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids Halloween album. And I picked this one up for $3.99 at a... Uh, record shop in Torrance titled, uh, I believe it's Record Recycler or is it Recycled Records on Crenshaw Boulevard over there. So you might want to check them out. I believe it's Record Recycler and I picked this up for $3.99 and it goes for about $35 on eBay. And this record is in excellent condition if you can see it there. And uh, I'll go ahead and share a snippet with you and uh, we're going to go ahead and listen to this album right now. <laughs> hey Mudfoot. You know what we're here for? Lay some treats on us. You know, when I was a kid, trick or treating was different. Yes, yes, good stuff. Again, uh, Fat Albert Halloween. Uh, love Halloween records. Well, I shouldn't say no, I like Halloween records and uh, just good to have, you know, just right there and and uh, I probably like them more than my kids like them, but I'm going to continue to buy these albums when I find them and I want to encourage you guys to do the same. Next up I found this week was uh, How the Grinch Stole Christmas and this is a very interesting album because it's by the Marty Gold Children's Choir and um, when I first seen it I went, oh look, the Grinch just stole Christmas, I'm thinking of the uh, you know, the one out for the cartoon, the old school cartoon there, the cat in the hat guy, what's his name again, that made those cartoons. So when I picked it up, I kind of knew it wasn't going to be, you know, your typical uh, How the Grinch Stole Christmas you know, LP, because I've actually seen that one at uh, FYE going for uh, $25. It was actually a green LP. I should have got it, but 25 is a little steep, so I'll wait till I find it for a dollar in that dollar bin in the local thrift shop or Goodwill or mom and pop shop or... Uh, you know, those places we go, the flea markets or swap meets. But I picked this one up, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. And I want to show you, this is banging right here, man. This version right here of How the Grinch is banging. I'm going to give you a snippet right now. So we'll go ahead and listen to that. Yeah, good stuff again, How the Grinch Stole Christmas by the Marty Gold Children's Choir. If you ever see it, make sure you pick it up. It's going to be a good album this Christmas to throw on and listen to. Next up, I found this one for a dollar. It's uh, Sounds of Terror. <laughs> and I actually used to have this album when I was a child. I probably have one still right there in my uh, collection. i got to double check. But it's basically, it has Sounds of Terror and... If any of you guys ever heard of a group called the Knights of the Turntable, they came out back when uh, the Wrecking Crew were out back in the early 80s. They actually used this album on a song called uh, Techno Scratch, <coughs> or I believe it was We Are the Knights, and they actually were scratching with some of these sound effects here. The good thing about this album is uh, when I picked it up, it was still in the plastic, and it actually had the, um, look at this here, it actually had the, the hand thing of the ghost here. You know, you put this little glove on your hand, and it's like... Hey everybody, how you doing? That's pretty cool, huh? The little ghost hand thing still inside the album, so I was excited about that. Anytime I find a, a Halloween album in this good of condition, regardless if I have it or not, I'm going to pick it up. So if you ever see this album here, go ahead and pick it up, especially if you can get it for a dollar. These albums go for about $15 now on eBay. Next up I picked up was, Hey There, It's Yogi Bear. So I'm interested in hearing this one. I used to like Yogi Bear when I was a child, and when I opened up the album, it actually had this in there. 
which is uh, a paper here that says, Hey there, it's Yogi, the funniest bear anywhere. And it says here that if I send this in, uh, they'll send me uh, for $1.95 an 8mm home video. And you guys know what 8mm home videos are. It's those, the projector videos there. So maybe I wonder if this is still active. i got to send it to... Uh, it says 7-Eleven, Fifth Avenue, New York, New York. So maybe I'll send that in and they'll send me my 8mm video or what. So yeah, I picked this one up for a dollar at a flea market. Again, it's, hey there, it's Yogi Bear LP. Excited to hear that one. Next up, I picked up, I actually paid $2 for this one because the guy was arguing me about how he had all these albums going for $200, which he probably didn't. It's Star Wars and Other Delactic Funk by Mechel. I see that one there. I never had it. I've seen it before. I seen it going for $11.99 on eBay, so I had to pick it up even though it was only $2. So I'm guessing it's like funk style or it's on Millennium Records. So I'm interested to see how this is. It's Meco, spelled M-E-C-O. That's why the uh, Galactic Funk against Star Wars. So I'm going to go ahead and listen to this tonight and see how it sounds. Matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and give you a snippet of it right now. Good stuff, good stuff. Next up I picked up, got this one at a thrift store. Puff the Magic Dragon and other songs, you know, you guys remember the old song uh, Puff the Magic Dragons. And this one's on Golden Records, so this is the actual oldie. Puff the Ma Matter of fact, I'll go ahead and play a snippet for you right now so I don't gotta sing it. So I'm gonna go ahead and play a snippet right now. Good stuff, good stuff. Puff the Magic Dragon. Have you ever seen albums? I'm looking at this album, man. I got a little kid right here on a on the tail of a dragon, man. Who wouldn't pick this up for a dollar, man? That's cool, man. Kids like dragons. See that? So anytime you see any something like this, pick it up, man. You know, especially if it's in good condition. Anytime you see a child's album or children's records, make sure you look at them because most of them have colors or you know crayons scribbled all over them or they're broken in half or it's the wrong album at that. I've actually uh, seen some pretty cool children's records that swap meets only to open up the album and it either be totally just damaged beyond belief or not even the right album. Next up I picked up was Babes in Toyland by Walt Disney. The guy wanted $5 for this one but I ended up talking him down for to a dollar obviously. I said you know what if you don't he wanted five say I got a dollar take it or leave it. Take the record home or a dollar you know at a, at a, at a uh, swap meet. So it still has the book in there so that's cool. The pages look good. Still in good condition, so it's very rare to find a Walt Disney record that actually has the picture book inside still intact with nice colorful pictures. So anytime you see any kind of Walt Disney album like this, go ahead and pick them up, especially if you get them for a dollar. Another children's album I picked up was uh, Cinderella. I'm sure there's a lot of different takes on Cinderella albums, but I believe I have two. So this one will be the third one I have, and I'll have to maybe share that one another day. But Kind of just sharing stuff I just recently bought and it still has the book inside so you see Cinderella there with the with the broom there and nice pictures there really colorful I like the artwork on them so it's, it's even more part of you know me just getting the LP or the album but actually getting the story with it and this is you know collector's item stuff especially when it's Walt Disney Cinderella nice stuff right here got it for a dollar again the Cinderella album and this one actually is not Disney. It's actually made by Peter Pan on uh, record label. Next up I picked up was uh, Mickey Mouse. This is my life album. So I haven't heard this one. I'm interested in hearing this one. This one um, also had the book still in it. So that was interesting. It also came with this little card here. It says, uh, Dear Parents and Friends, Dick Disney Records wants to thank you. So that's pretty cool when you uh, open the album. And it says here the address is in... Paramount, California. So this place probably don't exist. I should write them see if they send me anything back, right? They, it's just a card thanking me for buying the album. So I guess whoever owned the album kept this little postcard in the album all them years, which also would tell me that the album is in really good condition, if you can see there in the light. 
This one's a Walt Disney record, so it's more of a collector's item. So if you notice how Mickey has the bigger ears right here, and it's just really nice there to uh, have an album that is in this good condition and that is Mickey Mouse. Next up I picked up was Sesame Street. Uh, hit songs of Sesame Street, and it also contains uh, that song titled I Love Trash, and also C is for Cookie. Anytime you see anything Sesame Street, you want to pick it up. You guys probably already know that. Uh, Sesame Street albums are highly collectible, and if you don't know what Sesame Street is, shame on you. We you know, as children, we were raised on Sesame Street. I remember being in uh, elementary school, you know, first, second, third grade. They used to actually play uh, the cartoon or the, the show Sesame Street used to be on, I think it's uh, KCET Channel 28 here in Los, Los Angeles, Sesame Street. So anytime you see any kind of Sesame Street album, go ahead and pick it up. It's got a good song on there by Oscar the Grouch. No, not Oscar. Or, yeah, Oscar, the guy that lives in the trash can. That's his name, right? I love trash. So anytime you see anything like this, pick them up. And ironically, when I bought that one, I bought most of these off of a guy at the swap meet. I bought about 15 of them off of them. Some other ones I have to share another one. Um, he wanted me to pay a dollar each, but I ended up getting them off for $7, so I will them deal my way out of that. I told him, hey man, take the seven or take the records back home. He was a, a Mexican descendant guy, so he said, okay, $7 it is. I also picked up Sesame Street Disco. So I'm interested in hearing this album here. It's in really good condition still. Look at the colors in there. That is nice. I'll go ahead and play a snippet for you right now off of the Sesame Street Disco so we could go ahead and check out how that sounds now. It's not that easy being green Having to spend each day the color of the leaves When I think it could be nicer being red or yellow Good stuff, good stuff. Again, Sesame Street Disco. Again, anytime you see anything Sesame Street, you want to go ahead and pick them up. Another one I picked up was the Disneyland's Merry Christmas Carols. A lot of you guys know the their take on uh, the Christmas Carol or the Christmas Story. So I'm assuming this is actually part of that movie. It's got songs on there like uh, the Chipmunks Christmas Song, Sleigh Ride, uh, the 12 Days of Christmas, Silver Bells. Oh, I even Joy to the World, a Christmas, uh, a Christian Christmas song. So anything Disney I'm going to buy again, especially when it's in this good condition. It's not a gatefold album, so it's it's got the OG Disney there, print right there. Really good condition, so look forward to playing this one this Christmas. Again, anytime you see anything Disney, you might want to pick it up, especially if you're getting it for a dollar. Next up I picked up was Sesame Street 1, original cast record. So, man, I really got just... I kind of got lucky when I found all these Sesame Street records all together uh, from that same guy. I bought, like, like I said, between 12 and 15 of them for uh, $7. So again, uh, this is a CTW Sesame Street 1 original cast record. I've seen it going for $25 on eBay. So anytime you see anything Sesame Street, you might want to pick it up and add it to your collection. Another one I got was Christmas Favorites, Disney's all-time 13 favorites. Yeah, 13, that's a lot of, 13 all-time favorite Christmas songs, so and this might be a take off this other album I just showed, so again, anything Disney I'm going to get, check out Mickey Mouse there, Minnie Mouse, the whole gang there, Donald Duck, Goofy, uh, it's really nice, I think Donald Duck even has uh, his wife there and the kids, I see them in the back there making a snowman, so anytime I see anything Disney, especially if it's a Christmas album, I'm going to get it, this one has Deck the Halls on it, Frosty the Snowman, Santa's coming to town, Little Drummer Boy, another good Christian song there. Interested in hearing this album, it's in really good condition, so I know what I'll be playing this Christmas, hopefully, is Disney's Christmas favorites. Next up I picked up was Walt Disney's Peter Pan album, which I probably already have. So now I'm interested in completing all the old Sleeping Beauty, Peter Pan, uh, all them albums there, uh, Snow White. Then I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is put all them together and see which ones I have and which ones I don't so I can complete my Walt Disney's uh, original motion picture film soundtracks from back in the 60s and the 50s. Anytime you see any of those, you might want to pick them up. Another one I picked up, I actually picked this one up two days ago, was uh, Television's Greatest Hits. And this one contains the Jetsons uh, on it, the Jetsons 
theme. It even says uh, here, Jane Stop This Crazy Thing. Any of you guys know who MC Shan is? He had a song titled uh, Jane Stop This Crazy Thing. I believe it was, yeah, Jane, yeah. Jane Stop This Crazy Thing. You know, Google that. Google MC Shan. His name is S H A N. And um, you can hear the song where he actually uses his sample. He actually got uh, was threatened to get sued, so they actually had to take that off of uh, the song. So when the album came out, that that Jane stop that crazy thing from actually uh, the Jetsons was taken out. I haven't heard this album yet, so I'm looking forward to it. As a matter of fact, I'll play a snippet for you right now. So we'll go ahead and play this television's greatest hits here of the Jetsons' main theme. Good stuff, good stuff, and uh, another one I found was uh, Walt Disney Presents, The Little Engine That Could. It's also an interesting looking album, it has a train on it, and the train going up the hill, and it's just nice artwork, look at the back there. It's by Casey Jones, so anytime I see something like this, even if it's not one of the theme movies, I'm going to buy it, just because I'm kind of, you know, a junkie for old, old you know, Walt Disney albums, being that... Like I said, most of them are damaged beyond belief. So anytime you find something like that, it's in good condition. It's a dollar, pick it up. Because these albums are going to be worth quite a few bucks in the near future. Lastly, I picked up was, I was pretty happy to find this one. It's uh, actually the first of hopefully many that I'll be able to find is a Charlie Brown album. I don't have any Charlie Brown albums. So this one is actually, I believe, uh, a Valentine's one. You're in love, Charlie Brown. This album is in excellent condition. And this album was going for 25 or between 15 to 25 on eBay. So I got it for less than a dollar. I'm pretty happy about that. And if you see the inside here, this album is in excellent condition for a child's album. Love the detailed artwork, the colors there. Just all around nice. Anything Charlie Brown I'm always looking for. I actually seen on eBay, you know, the great pumpkin Charlie Brown album going for $40. So I'm hoping that uh, I just find it, you know, by luck somewhere at a thrift store or, at a, you know, at a local record shop because I really want to get, uh, you know, the Charlie Brown Christmas and Charlie Brown Thanksgiving if they have it, uh, uh, run, Race for Your Life, Charlie Brown, anything Charlie Brown LP I've been really trying to find for a long time and I finally found one so I'm pretty excited about that. That's my phone going off. Yeah, my phone rang, had to block that thing out, sorry about that. Forgot to mute my phone, you know, we'll make those mistakes. But again, uh, actually, let me give you a snippet of this Charlie Brown album right now. Hi, Linus. Good morning, Charlie Brown. Aren't you afraid of what the kids at school might say about that blanket? Do you have a nickel? Flip it into the air. <laughs> they don't say very much. Good stuff, good stuff. Again, uh, a lot of good stuff I found this week in children's albums. It's, it's just ironic because recently I've been saying, I want to collect children's albums. You know, I want to find more children's albums. And I go to one guy at a swap meeting. I end up picking all these up in one shot for $7. So that's a really good deal I got. I got blessed. And uh, I'm going to continue on looking for more children's albums. I probably got about 300 children's albums. And... These ones I probably don't have any, so I'm going to add to them, and I want to encourage you guys to go ahead and buy children's albums and add to them, because like I said, a lot of them are damaged, a lot of them get, you know, damaged because they're all obviously children damaged albums, right, when they get them, albums are so easy to damage, so anytime you find a child's record that's not damaged, make sure you buy it, and uh, thanks for watching again, uh, Digs of the Day, episode 12, a take on children's albums, if you know anything about any of these albums, feel free to comment below or ask questions, I'll get back to you as soon as I can, and uh, See you on the next episode and just stay digging. All right. I left one out. Peter Cottontail. That's all right.